Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be the Mid-Year Freakout Tag. The Mid-Year Freakout Tag was created by Ellie from Earl Grey Books and Chammy from Read Like Wildfire, which is not her channel name anymore because she's now a lifestyle vlogger. I will link to both of those videos below, but this was created so long ago that everybody just does it every year. You don't need to be tagged. So let's do this. Question number one is the best book that you have read so far this year. I'm going to cheat and pick three. My favorite piece of no academic nonfiction was Yasmin Yildiz's Beyond the Mother Tongue, The Postmonolingual Condition, which is an exploration of the way in which we talk about language and literature and the native or non-native language status of writers in countries in which there is a single national language. Yildiz is a German professor, so her focus is on German literature and specifically Turkish German and German Jewish writers, but this is definitely something that's applicable to other countries with a similar national attitude towards language, like countries like the US or France. And it's just a really interesting thing to read, especially if you have read the works of the people who are mentioned, which is people like Franz Kafka and Ferdinand Zimelou and so on. And I'm talking quickly because I know that that is probably the one that people are least interested in because that's a little <laughs> narrow in its appeal, I guess. In terms of more general nonfiction, my favorite was Mahmoud Darvish's self elegy In the Presence of Absence. This was translated from Arabic by Sinan Antoun. And this is not exactly poetry and not exactly a memoir. As a self elegy it's more of a memoir of emotion as opposed to a memoir of things that happened. So there are reflections on life, essentially, and life involving memories of childhood and memories of love and memories of exile. And it is really beautiful. Maybe not for everybody because I think if you like your memoirs to be about things that happened as opposed to how you felt, then you have to be comfortable with poetry to really go with the flow of this one. But I think if you are, this is just top notch. Also in the kind of poetry crossover <laughs> category, my favorite piece of fiction that I read this year was Farouk Sheich's Quiet Flows the Una. This was translated from Bosnian by Will Firth. This is also an exploration of memory in which we follow the main character who has repressed most of his memories. He presumably has PTSD, although that's never explicitly dated. He, it's the late 90s, he goes to a circus and he's hypnotized at the circus and the hypnotist is taking him back to when he's 10 or 12 years old. So he's going back in time to the 80s and he's thinking about fishing and pop culture and his grandmother. But his childhood reminds him of then his early 20s during the war. And that reminds him of his childhood. And so we go through this cycle where he's remembering bits of the present and the past and different moments in the past. And again, you have to be comfortable with a certain amount of poetic vagueness. But if you are, this is just fantastic. Question number two is the best sequel that you read so far this year. And the best sequel that I read so far this year was The Bombay Prince, which is book number three in Sajeda Massey's The Praveen Mystery series, in which our main character is a solicitor in Bombay in the 1920s, and she also solves crimes related to the various cases that she takes or hears about. And it is well plotted, it has a good interweaving of historical tidbits and kind of socio-political and cultural commentary along with fun suspense and mystery, it is an entertaining romp. And I just talked about this in a wrap up, so I'm not going to go too deeply into it. Next up is the new release that you want to read but haven't yet. I have a whole stack because again, we have to go through categories. I have a ridiculous middle grade version of the adult comic Hellblazer called The Mystery, The Meanest Teacher. Daniel from Guilty Feet referred to that as Heckblazer. And I think it's hilarious that that exists. So I haven't read it yet, but I want to. And now that I've talked about something light, let's talk about some depressing new releases. I'm also looking forward to reading I Will Never See the World Again. This is uh, Ahmet Altan's memoir. He was a political prisoner in Turkey, but he was recently released, uh, surprisingly, because I think he was technically sentenced to life in prison, but yeah, <laughs> right around the time that book came out. So that should be interesting because I always enjoy commentary from political prisoners because you can never get too depressing when it comes to what I'm looking to read. I'm also looking forward to reading uh, Semestine Mafedinovich's My Heart. The original version of this came out in 2017, but the English translation just came out this year. I have been a big fan of his poetry, and I believe this is a semi-autobiographical novel that is about a Bosnian man living in the US, and he has a heart attack and decides he needs to go home, so he does. Um, is my understanding. And also, My Library Hold of a Song for You by Robin Crawford. 
um, finally came in. This will probably be depressing too. This is her memoir of her life with Whitney Houston. Again, we're supposed to name one book and I just named four, so let's go. The next question is the anticipated release that you're most excited for. I don't really follow new releases, but um, I'm currently reading in Digital Floppies the comic series The Old Guard Tales Through Time, which is a prequel series to the main series of those. Issue 3 just came out last week, so issues, I think there are six in total, so there are three more, so I'm looking forward to those. Um, other than that, I don't know, because I haven't kept up with what's coming out. Um, and that is a series about a bunch of immortal mercenaries who are all centuries. Not all. Most of whom are centuries old. There was a Netflix movie that was of the first volume of the comic that came out last year, which shamefully cast good-looking people as the main characters, whereas in the comics, part of the fun is that all of the main characters are hideously ugly, and that's part of the charm. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I think I complained about this that in this tag last year. Uh, the next question is, what was your biggest disappointment? And my biggest disappointment was C.S. Friedman's Dominion. This is a prequel novella to her Cold Fire trilogy. Now, the Cold Fire trilogy I loved when I first read them, but I read them 25 years ago, so I don't know if I would love them now. Although I've seen people talk about them who read fantasy and science fiction who still enjoy them, so maybe I would. But this prequel novella was... It, it just wasn't particularly engaging and it wasn't that interesting. Now again, it's been a long time since I read the original series, so maybe if I were... if it were fresher in my memory I would be entertained by that, but it did feel really generic to me. And I really enjoyed the original series, so... disappointing. Next question is biggest surprise. And the biggest surprise for me was Hellblazer Rise and Fall. This is written by Tom Taylor and drawn by Derek Robertson, both of whom have done a lot of work that I like, but I went in knowing that this was a humorous take, and normally I prefer Hellblazer to be a pure horror and social commentary, so I was cautious about this. I wasn't particularly optimistic, but I ended up really loving this, and the humor hit right for me, so I didn't mind that it was humorous more than horrific. A great surprise. There we go. Um, the next question is favorite new author, and this is not exactly favorite new author, it's more favorite new translator slash author, but Amiel Alkali, he was the translator of two collections of poetry that I really loved this year that didn't quite make my top list, but uh, Sarajevo Blues and Nine Alexandrias by Smezdi Mepeditovich, he was the translator on those, and this from the Warring Factions is Alkali's own work. And he is really interesting, and his philosophy around translation as political activism is a really interesting philosophy. And he has quite a bit of writing on the way in which what gets translated and what doesn't from specifically the former Yugoslavia and from Israel and Palestine leads people in the Anglophone world to have really uneven and biased views of those areas, specifically because they're only getting certain voices at the expense of others. And so part of his translation as activism is trying to promote the publication and the translation of a wider variety of work. So I've enjoyed his writing and his translation work and his philosophy behind translation, which I think is great. He also wrote the introduction to a couple of books that I read that were translated by other people as well. Next question is your new fictional crush. And I don't really have one, but I am going to say I was really charmed by the combination of art and dialogue that was created by the three main characters who are doing the investigating in this book. I don't want to spoil who one of those three characters is, because I think that would ruin the fun of some of this, but that dynamic is adorable, and that is the closest I have to a crush, so I'm gonna say that. The next question is new favorite character, and I don't really have an answer to that because everything that I read is either nonfiction or semi-autobiographical nonfiction, and I feel odd naming real people as a favorite character and everything else is a series and it's the same characters. This is the problem when you mostly read depressing nonfiction and comic books. The next question is book that made you cry and until this morning I did not have an answer to that because well, I was gonna name some things that were really depressing but I didn't quite cry but I just finished reading this morning Aisha Chowdhury's The Color of God. This is a memoir, but it's a memoir that works in a kind of cyclical way in which she discusses a topic and then goes around and talks about essentially the mythology behind the way we talk about topics. So the first section is about how she grew up in a very religiously fundamentalist household, but it, her parents had chosen 
religious fundamentalism because they were frustrated with the amount of racism that they were facing uh, in Canada in the 70s and they felt like at least if they were facing religious prejudice over racial prejudice it was for something and you get your bonus points with God so that was better so that was what she was raised in the middle part is about body hair which sounds like an odd combination when you hear the book ending bits but the third part is about grief after the death of her five-year-old nephew and it's just gutting as I'm describing it, it this sounds like a weird combination of three things like family memoir that's about this interaction of social pressures, body hair, and then grief at the death of a child. That sounds rough, but it works because it is this very cyclical connecting the different myths that people tell themselves and everything. But anyway, the part about the death of the child and about thoughts about having children or not having children and whatnot, that was just gutting. So if you asked me last night, did I have a book that I cried over? It would be no, but this did it. The next question is books that made you happy and come on I don't read books that make me happy. <laughs> I read books about how humanity is awful. Although I guess because I said I laughed at the humor in the Hellblazer book that's gonna be my answer for that. So I'm naming that what three times now? The next one is the most beautiful book and I bought a few Folio Society books earlier this year including my favorite book of all time, pretty much All Quiet on the Western Front. Although it, I would say, is not actually the best looking of the Folio Society books that I bought. I got them. There was a big sale and I got a bunch of them on sale. I think the most beautiful one is, here we go, this is Reach for the Sky by Paul Brickell, who wrote The Great Escape, I think. This is his biography of Douglas Botter, who was a trick pilot turned fighter pilot in the Second World War, who if you think about a lot of the disability related inspiration porn stories that you read where somebody triumphed despite their disability, this is kind of the opposite because Botter was a successful fighter and trick pilot in the days before G-suits, specifically because he was a double amputee, which meant that whereas other pilots, if they did certain maneuvers, blood would rush to their feet and they'd pass out, he wouldn't pass out because it, that just couldn't happen for him, which is, a different kind of story. Now Botter himself had really atrocious political views and especially later in his life was uh, very pro-colonialist and had a lot of, as I said, gross political views. But fascinating life. He was also captured at the end of the war and tried to escape prison camps multiple times. Like his story is fascinating. Just uh, don't think of him as an admirable person because he had adventures because not a great guy. However, the story fascinating and that book is beautiful. There is a reason they're a lot more expensive and I would not have bought those if they weren't on sale. And the last question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I have two books that I have arcs through NetGalley of that I need to finish. One of which is a Ukrainian piece of nonfiction. I believe it's called Nuclear Folly, which actually has already been released and I started reading it and it is very dry. So. I will finish it one of these days, but I don't feel a lot of pressure to finish it quickly. The other one is a piece of Canlet. I do not remember the name of it now, but that doesn't come out until August, so I guess I have another month or so to read that. That was one where I requested it and I assumed I was not going to get it. It took a while and I got the notification that I have been approved for it, so I better read that one of these days. Anyway, that is it. Now, as I said, you don't need to be tagged to do this tag. But if you're looking for encouragement, please do this tag. Consider this your tag. Especially if you are thinking of starting a channel, this could be the way to start it. Yeah, anyway, if you've read any of the books I talked about, I'd love to hear what you thought. And if you're not gonna do this video, at least tell me what your favorite book of the year so far was, because I'd be curious to know. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.